church. Amen. Are you glad you're saved? Amen. Are you glad you're warm? Amen. All right, let's all stand, please. We're going to sing number 296. Follow on. We'll sing all three verses of number 296. All right, sing it out. This is a good song. page 243 victory in jesus 243 we'll sing all three verses sing it out victory in jesus Oh, 
safe, say amen. 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 Victory in Jesus. Wow, what a wonderful thing it is. Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of God. Good to see our church family again before we start this next week and get out in the world. It's good to see everybody and get charged up for Christ. Amen? Amen. amen. Well, let's, uh, let's open up with a word of prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together. Lord, we praise and thank you for your mercy, love, and grace that you would allow us to be born in a free country where we could come and we could make that decision whether we want to go to church or, or not. And Lord, I thank you so much for brothers and sisters in Christ who have made that decision that they would like to go to church and be a, be a part of a, of a church family. Bless those who have decided to tune in, those who, uh, Lord, who have a heart for the things of God. Lord, I ask that you please, that you would speak to us tonight, that you would prepare our hearts, that you would, you would uh, bring to mind anything that we might need to do business with you before we get to the preaching of your word so that we can receive the seed of the word of God and let it do its work in us. I pray, Lord, that you please send your Holy Spirit to come, take control of the, the, the service from the beginning to the end. Guard uh, each thing that is said and guide us in what we say, what we sing, what we, what we do here, that it may be for your honor and for your glory. Lord, please bless us tonight. Speak to us. I pray that you please make this a special service. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Let's go to number 274. Number 274, come unto me. Come unto me. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hear me and be blessed. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. O oh, ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. I'm no longer tearing, look over bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am meek and long. Disappointed, wandering here and there, dragging chains of doubt and loaded down with care. Do unholy feeling struggle in your breast. Bring your case to Jesus, He will give you rest. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon. often conquered men as a sense of weakness brought distress within Christ will sanctify you if you'll claim his best in the Holy Spirit he will give you rest come unto me I will give you rest take my yoke upon Brother Mark Lanier, come lead us in the next song. All right, amen. All right, turn over to page 232. 232, tell me the story of Jesus. We'll sing all three verses.
of these songs, how it talks so much about Bible truth, uh, just right, in, right in, in the music. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. I'm so glad that we have hymns and we have songs. Can you imagine being a, in a Catholic church and groaning and moaning as we're doing the Latin liturgy and, and stuff like that? How do you even spell that kind of stuff? I don't know. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm so glad that the Lord allowed us to know the truth. Amen. A few announcements before we continue. Um, uh, don't forget, uh, next Sunday evening is our annual church business meeting and potluck dinner here at the church. So that'll be starting at 5 o'clock in the evening. And we will uh, be having uh, a meal together and then having the service. So if, uh, if you are planning to, planning to be here, hopefully you are, that uh, you'll be, uh, bring a meat dish and then a salad, vegetable, or dessert. Also, uh, ladies, the trip to Shipshawana is coming up March 29th, and it's going to be a fun-filled day. And hopefully uh, you are uh, making plans to come. Praying uh, for should be good weather. Hopefully, uh, I'm still learning the the weather calendar here. So if I kind of speak like I'm thinking of Texas, it's whatever. Should be fine, right? March, March 29th. Anyways, so uh, we're we're planning on going unless some uh, ice storm or some crazy thing happens uh, that day. So uh, I'm looking forward to y'all having a, a good time. Don't forget we have the, the Bible reading charts out in the foyer. Please take a couple of those and leave them at your workplace or leave them with a friend. And, uh, and that'll, be a, that'll be a blessing. Amen. Does anybody have a blessing they'd like to share uh, with, with the church this evening? Yes, sir. Brother Tompkins. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. All right. Anybody else? A blessing, Miss Jennifer. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It does. It does. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yes.
do that? I think that's why you do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. We'll be praying for, for both of you. And uh, I appreciate all the help that you that you're able to, to give. It's a it's a for me it's a blessing just to be able to, um, to to know the pastor that has been here, that has done so much work in this area and just to follow in his footsteps and just try to try to keep what you were what the Lord was leading you to do, just keep it going. Just to keep plugging ahead and preaching the gospel. So I appreciate all the all the work you that that you can, that I can enjoy, uh, like Sunday school, love hearing you teach Sunday school, and uh, just to be able to, to enjoy that, so let's grab our hymn books, and let's uh, go to number 277, we'll sing one final song before our scripture reading, number 277, only trust him, only trust him, think about this, and in relation to the message this morning about our problems, this is a perfect song that we keep in the forefront of our mind, trust him, trust him, don't God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He wants us to trust him. First, second, and fourth verse. Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him. trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. For Jesus shed his precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Plunge now into the crimson flood that washes white as trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. On the last, come then and join this holy man and on to glory go to dwell in that celestial land where joys immortal all stand please and grab our Bibles for our scripture reading time. If you would turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, let's all stand for the reading of God's word and we ask Brother Tony if he would come and lead us in our scripture reading. Good evening. We'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 through 10. 1 Corinthians 4 verses 1 through 10. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is, very small, is a, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified? But he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another and what hast thou that thou didst not receive now if thou didst receive it why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it now ye are full now ye are rich ye have reigned as kings without us and i would to god ye did reign that we also might reign with you 
For I think that God had set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. In verse, rules Christ, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word, Lord. Teach us tonight what you want us to apply as we get ready to start our week, Lord. You've been great to us, wonderful to us, Lord, and we thank you for all you've done for us at this church so far, Lord. And I'll please give our pastor what he needs to tell us tonight, Lord. May all we do honor and glorify you, Lord, here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I wasn't there by the shores of Galilee when Jesus touched those blinded eyes and made them see. And though I did not see the empty tomb that day, I still believe. For I know what Jesus did for me. I believe there is power in the blood of the Lamb. I believe there is healing in the touch of His hand. But the greatest of all miracles was when Jesus saved me. Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. And I have seen the lower sin sick soul have life anew. And be made pure, pure and whole. And I have felt him loose the chains of sin and set the captive free. Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. I believe. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. I believe there is healing in the touch of His hand. But the greatest of all miracles was when Jesus saved me. Yes, I know. What Jesus did for me. I want you to listen to the words. Preacher, sing it again. You want me to sing it again? All right. If I make any mistakes, it's the preacher's fault. <laughs> I wasn't there by the shores of Galilee when Jesus touched those blinded eyes and made them see. And though I did not see the empty tomb that day, I still for I know what Jesus did for me. I believe there is power in the blood of the Lamb. I believe there is healing in the touch of His hand. But the great of all miracles was when Jesus saved me. Yes, I know what Jesus 
Scene, huh? That's great. That's great. That's great. I remember uh, Melissa when we go back home. Uh, Grampy, he'll get it, get out his accordion, or we'll s gather around the piano and just to hear him sing the old hymns of the faith, and just uh, for a precious, precious time. One day we'll all be in heaven. We'll all be singing around the, the big, great, big pipe organ of heaven. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how that's gonna just? It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause thunder all through the universe. It's going to be so powerful. Wow. Let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I want us to concentrate on a verse here in this passage. Paul was speaking to the Corinthians. He was talking about, in verse 1, how that they were made ministers of Christ, and they were stewards of the mysteries of God. God had given them teachings from the Word of God that they were to dispense, that they were to, to manage well. And then he said in verse 2, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And he goes on and he talks about different things that he, that he went through, and he came down to verse, verse 9 where he says, For I think that God hath set... Forth us apostles last, as it were pointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. This morning, our text passage in chapter 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 11 said, I am become a fool in glorying. This evening, I want to bring a message called fool, A Fool for Christ. A Fool for Christ. This is what Paul considered himself as, considered himself as a fool for Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you, Lord, that you've given us a chance to come to church. Thank you so much, Lord, for the, the special and the, the songs that we have sung and the preparation that you've done in our hearts. I pray, Lord, that you'd please take this time, the time that we have left, and that you would please use this to, to stir up our hearts and to, to stir the embers and the fire in our spirit to, to be everything that we need to be for you. Lord, I ask that you'd please take me up and use me. I pray that you'd please unleash your Holy Spirit, that he would speak to our hearts, that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, that you would pour me out, and that you would feed us, the church of God, with the message that you have for, for prepared for us tonight. Lord, I ask that you'd please lift up Jesus. May he be glorified. May our hearts be challenged. May our hearts desire and, and have more hunger and thirst for righteous things. Lord, I pray that you please bless our time together. Hide me behind the cross of Jesus, rebuke the evil one, and may the Holy Spirit have free reign. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Some derivative of the word fool is mentioned in 189 verses in the Bible. 42 times a derivative of the word fool, that's fool, fools, foolish, foolishness, something with the word fool in the root is mentioned in the New Testament of the Bible 42 times. Of the 42 times in the New Testament, 30 times 
a reference to the word fool is mentioned by Paul in his writings. And of the 42 times that Paul mentions or references these words, 18 times he references the word fool or similar in the letters to the Corinthians. Can you imagine? Can you believe that? If you have a pen and paper, jot these references down. 1 Corinthians 1.18. It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 20, he says, Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Verse 21, It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Chapter 1, verse 23, it says, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Verse 25, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Verse 27, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That's six times in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 alone. Out of the 18 times, one-third of them are in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 2 has another reference. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Our carnal man, our carnal self, does not understand the things of God. It's, it's foolishness, Paul says. It's, it, it doesn't make sense. Chapter 3, verse 18, it says, Let him become a fool that he may be wise. Verse 19, it says, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Chapter 4, verse 10, it says, We are fools for Christ's sake. We just read that uh, just a bit ago. Chapter 15, in verse 36, it says, Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. 2 Corinthians eleven sixteen it says, Let no man think me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool receive me. Verse 17, it says, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly. Verse 19, it references fool again. Verse 21 of chapter 11, references fool again. Verse 23, it references the fool again. And then two more times in chapter 12. But of, the, but of all these instances, of all these 18 instances, two of them stand out to me. This morning we read from a text in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11. It says, I am become a fool in glorying. And then our text this evening, 1 Corinthians 4.10, we, we are fools for Christ's sake. I think Paul was trying to tell the Christians of Corinth and whoever else would read this letter the need for them to become something that they probably wouldn't, at first glance, jump at becoming, and that was becoming a fool. But that is what the world needs today. The world needs fools for Christ. Fools for Christ. And as a fool for Christ, what, are, what do we expect? What, what are you expecting to happen to you as a fool for Christ? We're going to use our Bible tonight. We're going to look at some scripture with that thought in mind. And let's look at what we learn. Let's turn back to Psalms 107. Psalms 107 is just a, a few verses. Uh, in, pretty much in the same area of the Bible. So it's not going to be too much work for you. Although uh, this is a precious book. So anytime we get to look in the Bible, it should be a joy. Amen? Amen. 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 So many countries without the word of God. And we have over a thousand pages and we can just bask in the word of God and enjoy it. Amen. Psalms 107. Let's look at some scripture and see what we learn about if we're going to be a fool for Christ, what, what is it that we could be expecting? What should we be expecting as a fool for Christ? Psalms 107 in verse 17. It says, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquity, are afflicted. Under, underline the, the word fools at the beginning. And then the last two words are afflicted. It says here, fools are afflicted because of their transgression and because of their iniquity. So if a fool, because of his transgression and because of his sin and because of his lifestyle, if they are afflicted, if it, then, then, then you can turn it around and ask yourself, if I'm a fool for Christ, for, for my transgression of believing in Christ, according to the world's view, of, of believing in the blood of the land, according to the world's view, that's a transgression in their eyes. 
what could I expect? I can expect affliction. I can expect people to, to not treat me right at work. I can expect people, I can expect the boss to not give me that raise or to give me that promotion or to, 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 to not give me those things that, 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 that I would expect. Why? Because they look at me, I'm a fool. I'm a fool for Christ. It says that the, a fool for Christ or a fool is afflicted. If you're a fool for Christ, then we ought to expect affliction. We shouldn't expect a, a primrose path and a sugar-coated path uh, if we're, if we're going to be a fool for Christ. Fools are afflicted, and a fool for Christ will be afflicted. Turning your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. When the Bible is taught and a person rejects the teaching of the word of God, they are classifying, they are showing to themselves and to the world their heart's condition. They are a fool. That's, a, that's, a, that's very foolish. For somebody to be able to, to, to take God's word, that's the supreme authority. To question the validity of the word of God and to, to question its, its, its non-erroneous state, it's without error, it's without mistake. Amen. 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 That's what we believe. This book has no mistakes in it. And for somebody to question it, it just shows to them. Anybody who would say that kind of thing is a fool. Well, if you're a fool for Christ and you don't follow the world's doctrine, you don't follow the world's teaching, then you just classified yourself as a fool for Christ. A fool for Christ despises the wisdom and the instruction of the world. A fool for Christ despises the wisdom and instruction of the world. A fool for Christ is so in love with Jesus Christ. They don't want to, they don't, the, the world has nothing for them. Their philosophy, it, 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 it does have no, has no hold on their heart. Why? Because they despise the instruction and wisdom of the world. Proverbs 122 says, how long you simple ones will you love simplicities and simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Fool, a, a, a fool hates knowledge knowledge but a fool for christ hates worldly knowledge yeah. can't stand it because he knows he knows that it's not just the knowledge that gets in your head it it, it, it hooks it's 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 hooks into you and, and it's hard to get out yeah. how many times how many times have have you have you had to 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 scoot to the back of your mind some song or some picture yeah. that you saw back when you were unsaved or back when you were a teenager and that knowledge was planted in your mind and that not that the the song was planted in your mind and it, and it's like you, you you've got to do everything you can to get to get it out of your mind that's the knowledge of the world and that's how a fool for Christ looks at it he's like I don't want to know any about that anything about that stuff because I don't want to get stuck in my head he's a fool for Christ Fools hate knowledge. A fool for Christ despises the wisdom and instruction of the world. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35, it says, The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. How many times have you seen a foolish person, somebody, uh, somebody that you know, and, and, and they just keep making dumb mistake after dumb mistake after dumb mistake, and it's an embarrassment. They have a record, and they have this reputation, this horrible reputation. Shame is the promotion of fools. But if you flip it up on its head, you say, a, wise, a person who's wise in the world, what do they inherit? They inherit glory. They get the promotions. They get the, 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 the raises. They get all the accolades and the glory because they're wise in the world. Yeah. But what does a Christian get? What does a fool for Christ get? He gets shame. Yeah. If you're a fool for Christ, that's what you, you should expect. We shouldn't expect anything different. We shouldn't e expect to be, to, to be treated better than our master was. What did they do to our master? What did they do to our Christ? They crucified him. We can't expect anything less. That's something that we have to understand, and we have to come to grips with the fact that, hey, if I'm going to be a fool for Christ, if I, my life is going to count for Christ, then I, I've got to be willing. I've got to be willing to suffer. There's going to come a day when persecution is going to come. Are you going to fold? You've got to mentally prepare yourself and, and, and ask yourself, am I going to fold? No, I don't want to fold. I want to stand for Christ. I, I love the story of Richard Wormbrand. Have you ever heard of Richard Wormbrand? 
read his story, Tor Tortured for Christ. I believe you can get it for free if you go to voiceofmartyrs.com. It's an awesome, awesome book. And, and, and Richard, Richard Warmbrand was in the, the jail and he was being tortured and his son was brought into the room. And they said, if you don't recant Christ, we're going we're gonna to mutilate you in front of your son. And his son said, Dad, don't, don't re recant Christ. Don't, don't deny Christ because I don't want to, I don't want to have a, a, a coward for a father. Fool for Christ can expect shame. And now Mr. Warnbrand has, his testimony has spread through the whole world and has inspired countless more Christians to take, to take a stand, to, 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 to stick their necks out and, and to, to be brave and be bold for Jesus Christ. People say, when you're over the target, you, you better expect to get shot at, right? If you're, if you're in, the, in the Air Force and you're bombing the, 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 the target city, you well, expect to get shot at. When you're standing as a fool for Christ, you better expect to be shamed and opposed. When that is what you're getting, you are being promoted. Do you understand? You're being promoted in the ranks of Christ. When shame comes to you from the world, just take that as a badge of honor from Jesus Christ. Shame shall be the promotion of fools, and a fool for Christ should expect shame. Go to chapter 12. Go to chapter 12, Proverbs 12 and verse 23. I, I know it's, it's not our desire to make a spectacle or our desire to, to ruin, to, to have a bad testimony in the eyes of the world. It's, it's our desire to, to be as gentle. The Bible says, as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. And I, I understand, but there's going to come a time when we have to, we have to draw that line. And the, the line in the sand cannot be like, like a Bugs Bunny, where he draws a line. If you cross that line, I'm going to, and then he draws another line, and then draws another line, and then draws another line, and then draws a line over the cliff, and Yosemite Sam falls off the cliff. That's not how we're supposed to live our Christian life. We need to draw the line in the sand and say, hey, listen, you cross that line, and I'm, I'm going to stand for what I believe is right. Proverbs 12 and verse 23, it says, A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaim foolishness. The heart of fools proclaim foolishness. 1 Corinthians it says in verse chapter 1 and verse 12, uh, 25, it says, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Verse 27 says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And you see in the world, the heart of a fool proclaim, proclaims foolishness. You see a person who can't speak truth and, and they, they speak uh, things that are off the wall and crazy, but a fool for Christ, if you flip it, on, flip it on its head, a fool for Christ also cannot keep his mouth shut. Because he's, why? He's proclaiming foolishness. What the world calls foolishness, he just can't help but talk. He can't help but speak it. He can't help but speak the things he's seen and heard. It's like, the, like, the, like the apostles in Acts, they, they just had to tell about Jesus because that's all they knew. A fool for Christ cannot keep his mouth shut. From the world's perspective, what a fool for Christ believes is foolishness. It, it, it doesn't make sense. So we shouldn't want to disappoint them then should we let's speak foolishness if they call what we believe foolishness well then let's speak it it's foolishness and a fool for christ cannot keep his mouth shut go to chapter 13 and verse 19 it says the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul but it is abomination to fools to depart from evil it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil you see a person and you see their life, and you see the destruction that's going on, and you see how they're just making dumb decision after dumb decision after dumb decision. You, and, you, and you see them try to go get help. You see them go to, go to rehab, and then they come out, and they're worse than what they were before. And you're like, what a fool. Well, again, if you are a fool for Christ, a fool for Christ gets sick just thinking of being accused of being a Judas to Jesus Christ. It is an abomination. It makes that word abomination makes so sick that you want to that you want to, you know, upchuck. All right, 
That word abomination makes, and, and there's certain things that God says in his word that are abomination to God that makes him just sick to his stomach. And, and a fool for Christ, he gets sick just thinking of being accused of being a Judas to Jesus Christ. He does not want to betray Jesus Christ. He does not want to depart from what Jesus has done for him and what Jesus has taught. He won't sell Jesus out for any price. That's what a fool for Christ will do. That's what a fool for Christ, and that's what we need to be. We need to be that in our, in our workplace. We need to be that in our neighborhood. We, and it, when, being a fool for Christ does not be, mean being belligerent. It does not mean being ugly or mean, but it's not backing down. It's saying, listen, this is what I believe, and you can think what you want about me, but I'm going to stand my ground, and I'm going to speak the truth and, and do my best to get the word of God out to you. Verse 20 of chapter 13, it says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. I've said before and used this verse on how, it, how it's so important for us to walk with the right kind of people and so important for us to, to hang, around, hang around people that, that love the Lord because they will rub off on us. You, you are now or soon will be what your friends are. But then it says, a companion of fools shall be destroyed. If you have fools for friends, you're going to be destroyed. But listen, if you're a fool for Christ, a friend of a fool for Christ will also be destroyed along with his fanatic friend. If you're going to be a fool for Christ, or if you have a friend who's a fool for Christ, you better, you better expect that the, the, the negative that they're, going to, that they're going to experience is going to come back on you. 2 Timothy 4.10 says, For Demas hath forsaken thee, having loved this present world. And I ask myself, why did Demas forsake Paul? Why did Demas forsake Paul? Because Paul was in prison, and Paul, he was, his life was threatened. And I, I people say that he, that he loved the things of this world. And I wonder, was it the love of the things of this world, or the fact that he loved living in this world, and he wasn't ready to die? Makes you wonder. He loved this world so much that he said, ah, oh, you're going to die, Paul? I'm out of here. And he loved being in this world, so he left Paul. If you're going to be a fool for Christ, or you're going to have a friend that is a fool for Christ, you can expect to be destroyed along with your friend. Go to chapter 15, Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, and verse 2. Proverbs 15 and verse 2, it says, The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, right, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, right, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. A person who is a fool cannot help but speak what's in their heart. The foolishness that's in their heart. And a fool for Christ cannot help but speak his foolishness. We've got to be going every day, every, every place we go, we ought to be speaking the, the foolishness of Christ. Or at least, or at least a, have a leaky seed basket and, and passing, passing out the foolishness of Christ in the form of tracts, in the form of gospel, gospel witness. Because a fool for Christ cannot keep from speaking his foolishness. It's, it, it wells up within him. It's like a, well of, a, a spring of living water in his soul. He can't help but, but speak it. And so a fool for Christ cannot help from speaking his foolishness. Go to chapter 15 and verse 14. Verse 14, it says, The heart of him that understandeth seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of, of fools feedeth on foolishness. A fool is someone who can never get enough foolishness. You know that the, the Lay's potato chips, they say you cannot eat just one? You know the depravity of man. That's the depravity of the, the, the depravity of man. You would think you would think that with one uh, uh, worldly, ungodly, wicked, vile song, that the whole world would be satisfied. But are they satisfied? No. They've got to have a second one and a third one and a fourth one. They've got to have an external hard drive. They've got to have a terabyte. They've got to have they've got to have a server in the cloud so they can have all this music and all this access to to stuff to to fill the depravity that's there. Because they're never satisfied. The mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. They're never satisfied with one foolish thing. Well, the same thing with a fool for Christ. A fool for Christ is never satisfied with past foolishness. 
Oh, 10 years ago, I was, I was uh, you know, I had some souls saved and I had a bus route and I had, but a fool for Christ said, you know, that's, the, that's history. I can't, I can't settle on my leads. I can't settle on my, my past successes. I've got to keep going for Christ. And a fool for Christ says, it's not enough. I've got to keep going. I've got to keep going. There's still battles to wage. There's still people to, to change, the, the lives to change and people to touch. A fool for Christ is never satisfied with past foolishness. He always wants more. He always wants more because he's a fool for Christ. He's all sold out and he's, he, he's, he's totally given to his Savior. Go to Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 29. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 29. <clears throat> Proverbs 19, 29. It says, judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. You see a person who, who, who takes, who disregards wisdom, who, who, who when, when wisdom is given to them, they throw it away and they classify themselves as a fool because they reveal their heart's condition. And you, and you see that their, life's, their life ends up with many stripes and they're, 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 they're hurt and they're, they're, they're punished and, and they, they, they just, it seems like life never goes well for them because they keep di uh, disregarding wisdom. Well, a fool for Christ can expect the same thing. A fool for Christ will suffer persecution. A fool for Christ will suffer persecution. You better mentally and, and physically prepare that the, the, the fact that you're going to suffer persecution, if you're going to stick it out for Christ, if you're going to be all that you want to be for Christ and be considered a fool for Christ, you're going to be persecuted. It's going to come. It's going to come. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when the time comes? I think, I think God gives us these examples in his word, and he gives us these truths about it uh, uh, in his word so that we will consider and we will mentally prepare ourselves so when that time of testing comes, we will be counted faithful. Right. We won't buckle, and we won't, we won't melt down and be ashamed because one day we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And it would be heart-wrenching for me if I, in the time of testing, and all the grace that God put into my life to get me to this point, when the time of getting cooked in the oven and the time of trial came and the time of testing came, if I melted like a wax candle. But a fool for Christ, if, if, they are, if they are looking at the Bible and they're understanding what, 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 what the Bible says about a fool and you understand that, that Paul was talking about being a fool for Christ, well then, what a fool suffers is what we ought to be expecting. We ought to be expecting. And that's what this world needs. We need more fools for Christ. We need people who, who, will, who will be all out for Jesus Christ. Who will take? Who will who will stick their neck out? Who will who will uh, uh, shame their name? Who will put their reputation on the on, on the line for Jesus Christ? Because this world it's not going to be won by wallflower Christians. It's going to have to be Christians who are aggressive people, Christians who are getting out there and 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 putting their reputation out and and showing the world, hey, this is very Christ. This is, this is very Christ. This is what Jesus wants to do with your life. And they are presenting the gospel and, 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 and getting the truth to the world. The world needs fools for Christ. And the world will only be won when we as Christians, when we are determined, you know what? If a fool is going to suffer these things in God's word, I want to be a fool for Christ. I need to mentally and I need to expect this is, this is the road that I am traveling. Wide is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the path that leads to life. He who finds his life shall lose it, but he who loses his life for Christ's sake shall find it, shall save it. And that's what we, as Christians, we've got we've to ask ourselves. Am I a fool for Christ? Am I a fool for Christ? And let that challenge our hearts. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you, Lord, for the Apostle Paul who gave us such challenging thoughts from your word. 
I pray, Lord, that you please help us, Lord, <clears throat> as Christians of today. Help us, Lord, to think about our Christian life and our testimony in the eyes of the world. Lord, that we would put our reputation aside, but that we would think about what the Lord, what his needs are. And Lord, he needs fools for Christ. He needs people who are sold out. He needs people who are breakneck speed. He needs people who are, who are, are, are giving it their all to show the world a difference. I pray, Lord, that you please challenge our hearts. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to put our reputation, be able to put our reputation aside and surrender it and put it into your hands and ask and, and, and have you use us in a way that would get the gospel to this lost and dying world, that would get the example of Jesus Christ and the truth of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. Lord, you need fools for Christ. Lord, help us, Lord, as your church, as your children to rise up to say that that's what I'll be. That's what I'll be. I'll be a fool for Christ. I'll give it my all for Christ. And I will take a stand for the things that are in God's word. I will be a testimony. Let's all stand, please. And we have Miss Melissa play a hymn of invitation. I encourage you to come and use the altar of God. Talk to him and ask the Lord to challenge your heart. And to open your understanding. If there's a place where you can, where you can uh, uh, be more, put yourself out there for Christ, that he would show it to you. That's what this world needs. We need sold out Christians. Christians who are sold out. Who, who, who disregard their reputation. Who disregard what the world thinks of them. Who will just go all out for Jesus Christ. That's what we need. Let's, be, let's make that our prayer. Our hymn books and go to number 261. We'll sing the first and last verse of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Number 
261. says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? He made us grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. That's what our Jesus did for us. Amen. He was a fool for us. He, 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 there was no, nothing holding him back. He gave it all for us. Let's do it for him. Let's do it because we love him. Let's do it because we appreciate what he did for us and we return it back to him. May that be our challenge. May that be our fire this week that that. That, that our prayer, Lord, I want to be a fool for Christ this week. Use me. Use me in a way that would, that, would, that would risk my reputation, but that would advance your name and advance your kingdom. That's what we need. That's what this world needs. We need Christians who are, who are sold out for Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray, and we'll be dismissed. Brother Robinette, would you just miss us in prayer, please?